Okay. Okay. Talk to you soon. There we go. Okay. Hey, everybody. It's Patrice Sandstrom, and I'm here in Essex. Um, and Claire invited me to come and share my Inspired Into Action class. And so I'm just really grateful to be here. So thank you very much. Um, first of all, we always, my favorite bold law is that we teach people how to treat us. What that means is we want to be interactive. So I'm going to ask for your support coming back. We're going to be giving a lot of um, energy and we want to make sure that we're getting it in, re in return. And again, please, please, please participate and ask questions. It'll be helpful for everybody. So first, I'll share a little bit about me. Um, so I'm an agent. I've been running the number two team in my market center for the last five years. I've also been our growth committee chairperson which means I've been in charge of getting people to join our office. And we have about 400 agents. We've been the number one team, excuse me, the number one office in Northern California for I think about the last four or five years as well. So I'm so blessed that I was able to learn from some really, really amazing leaders. And I just want to say that all of this stuff that you're learning, you guys, this is not from me. This is just stuff that I've learned from other people. When I came in, I didn't have any of this. So all of this stuff that I'm sharing, just know that, this is all very Keller Williams. It's all learned from someone else. And that's the best way to learn is just really by finding um, the knowledge that applies to you. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, today is all about my five lessons, the things that I really wish that I knew at my core when I began my career in real estate. So first, I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of Darby and Sloan. They're 19 and 21. They just moved out this year. So oh, I'm an empty nester. Heartbreak here. I also have two stepdaughters. They're Kirsten and Kate and they're 30 and 32. And I have one little granddaughter. And I feel about her the way that you saw Claire with her puppy. I'm like, oh my God, she's the cutest thing in the whole world. I'm her pippy and she's my little sweet sky. And we just have so much fun together. So love, love, love being a mom, love being a real human. And for a long time, I used to feel that I had to be a a straight business person in one role and then be a sweet loving mom in the other and I'm learning again to kind of evolve that together and I think in this kind of a business where we give so much of ourselves when we're being successful I think that that's really an important lesson as well not quite on there so so I'm going to start out with bragging you guys right from the start so I dropped out of college my junior year ah oh. <laughs> um so I was a Vulcan, I wanted to be a volcanologist. I wanted to study volcanoes. I pictured myself. I wanted to be a scientist. I wanted that so very badly. And I found myself my junior year. I was a sorority girl and talking about being a mom and family. And at the same time, I was a geology honor society treasurer. And I just realized that my life was not aligned. I kind of wasn't exactly where I wanted to be. So dropped everything. I just turned 21. And a week later, I moved to California. I, um, I bought a plane ticket and, and just moved there. So what did I do? I ended up working in retail, right? Everyone's done that the little dress shop. I was a waitress at a comedy club. That was actually really cool. If you're wondering how I got all this awesome sense of humor, probably learned that from some of the comedians. I was a professional athlete's nanny for a while. So that was really, really cool. Unfortunately, well, I guess it worked out well. They were having babies. So normally everyone got to travel around the world with him. We were kind of homebound. But again, I got to learn so much about being a great parent. And, um, you know, we talk about 10,000 hours and that intensity. So learn so much from him. When I was 23, I moved back to Louisiana and decided that I was going to open a coffee shop. My parents have always owned their own businesses. And so it seemed very natural. Starbucks was just opening and I was sure that I was going to be a coffee millionaire. Well, that didn't really work out. Love putting the business together two hours after opening. And I'm like, oh my God, do I have to make coffee for the rest of my life? That just was way too boring. So imagine again, are you guys seeing a pattern here? I definitely jump in first and think a little bit later. So, and then at some point I found myself as a struggling stay at home mom. And I say struggling because again, those regular day-to-day -day things were truly a challenge for me, you guys. I would forget about things. I would nearly half burn down the house by, by leaving things on. And I found myself really in judgment of not being able to do really regular things. Um, after I sold my coffee shop for a loss, I became an executive assistant for a CEO of a business and he was a professional negotiator. So my point about saying all this is I have a really diverse background. I've been a jack of all trades until 2004 when I just moved back to California again. And I was a client care coordinator and loan processor for a really successful mortgage broker. 
And then I got my real estate license. And so now I've been selling real estate for 15 years. And you guys, this is the first thing that I've ever really, really been good at. And I'm freaking good at this, right? So I just wanted to let you know that don't think if you've come from another background or, you know, you're, you haven't figured out your thing, this could be your thing. This is the coolest career ever, you guys. So lesson one, here we go. B is more powerful than do. You've all heard of the book, Think and Grow Rich. Probably you've read it. Well, notice it's not do and grow rich, right? And this is still a very relevant book for a reason. So I'm going to start out with another story. And this is my bold story. And I don't think you guys have had bold in person yet there, although you may have seen it online during Zoom. But when I first joined Keller Williams about six years ago, you guys, I had a negative mindset about training. I was so, my ego was like, I don't need to. I can figure it out on my own. I've got this covered. Like I just, I'm not taking a class. If you told me I had to take a class, I would have not signed up for Keller Williams. I know number one training company in the world. And again, you'll hear that my perspective has changed, but that's where I was when I first started. I had something to prove. And I think my ego wouldn't let me realize that I needed someone else, right? So thankfully, like I said, I had an amazing team leader. And because I was a leader in the office, she pretty much made me take the class. She forced me to go in there and said, you have to because you're a leader in the office. And if you do it, other people will. I'm like, okay, you put some pressure on me. I'm going to do whatever you ask. So once I was in this class, you guys, it was life changing. So definitely if you, whenever it comes, make sure you take it because it's a great opportunity. So what bold is, it's actually an eight week class, excuse me, an eight class is over seven weeks. And in mine, we had 60 people in the room and they divided into groups of 10. And then on each team, they have to have a team captain. Well, since I was on the ALC and a top producer, they stuck me as the team captain. I was like, okay. And everyone else on there, they were, you know, newer or they just were lower producing agents. And so, again, I mentioned that responsibility is something that I definitely um, take very seriously. So being that team captain, it gave me extra pressure to do the things that I had been avoiding my entire career. And again, I mentioned my ego a little earlier. And to be honest, that was holding me back. So, but everybody was so scared at the table because wait till you're in bold. It's really intense. You do a lot of stuff that you're not prepared for. It's definitely new for me, but they needed to see me do it first. So, right. So I didn't really know what to do either. I was terrified, but it seemed important for me at that time that I needed to lead by example. And I realized that the people around me needed me to become a leader, right? And so when I became a leader, right, when I stepped into that role, I realized that my own fears, my limiting beliefs, and my ego, you guys, they just melted away. Up until then, all of my clients were referred to me. They would come from a past client because, as I mentioned, I was a very intense, hard worker. I did a great job for my clients. I just was too afraid of asking for business. I called it chasing business, right? I just didn't want that. We also had open houses at the time. So people would meet me and realize that I was pretty bright. And so I would get clients naturally that way. So if someone was naturally attracted and wanted to work with me, then we had a great experience. But if someone didn't know me, right? Strangers, lead generation, all of those things, I wouldn't ask. I didn't ask for referrals. I was just too fearful. So in this bold class, because I was now the leader of these nine other people who needed me to do something for them. For the first time, I was out door knocking. You guys, I got one listing from door knocking during that time period. I'm like, what? I didn't even know that worked. I was calling expired. Um, at the time, we were having a lot of expired. So I was making expired phone calls. I got two listings during that period during expires. What? I didn't even know this was possible. So within that seven weeks period, I was able to uncover 14 pieces of business by, by actually going out and getting that business. And by the way, that is... That's the average for bold for the entire country. But in California, the average, we always, they always joke because Californians, I think it's because our higher price point that we usually don't do as much business through bold. So it was a phenomenal success. It was pretty exciting. They had me on commercials for bold around the region for a while because it was really good results. But what was important, you guys, is that in addition to me having such success, the agents at my team were actually trying new things. And I was something that I needed to see. And that was the way that I was able to find my path of what was really fulfilling for me. And bold class was also the start of me realizing the difference between being the best agent and being the best business owner, right? And ideally we want to become both, but it doesn't matter how good you are. If you don't have clients, you're going to go out of business, right? If you don't have enough money to support your family, it doesn't matter how fantastic you would be personally and how well you could take care of someone if you have no one to take care of, 
and if you run out of money and you have to leave the business and go into something else, right? So what I needed to realize at that moment is that super successful people, they're not always the hardest working and they're not always the most educated, but for that next level success, it's not about what you know or do to get extraordinary results. It's about who you become. So how can you put this into action? Well, first, you need to do an honest self-assessment of yourself and with no judgment. That's something we all need to get into practice and you'll hear me say this a lot. You need to realize and accept that you have to get to a higher level of knowledge. Taking classes, by the way, that was my realization, right? Whether you think you need it or not, we all need it. We can all get better because the you that you currently are, you do not have the skills and the knowledge to create your fantasy life. How do I know that? Because if so, you would have done it already. So to have the most, the most wonderful, the best life that you could possibly be, possibly have, in your, my opinion, you have to gather your courage and you have to commit to making time to studying yourself. You have to practice dreaming of who you'd want to be and what your life might look like if you had a magic wand. And the good news is you get to start with pure fantasy. Discovering your best life in an, oh my God, this is risky kind of way. You want to be nervous and excited to say it out loud and just a little bit scared. And then in my opinion, you need to commit to learning what's needed so that you can bridge the gap from where you are today to where you're going. And you guys, this takes practice. Oh my God, this was super challenging for me. I had to ask myself, if I were to become my best self, what would that look like from other people's eyes? For me, it was easier to see it that way. So I would ask myself questions, and I still do to this day, questions like, what actions would a great leader take? If I want this type of team member in my business, this kind of partner in my life, or this type of client, how do I need to behave? Which skills, which behaviors do I need to master to get the results I desire? And really, it starts by asking some great questions. And this is also called a gap analysis. But as I like to add a little fun to everything, I call it my rainbow bridge. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. So next, you guys are going to have to, once you write your answers down, right, you need to explore your answers. Really pay attention and ask yourself these questions. And then you need to start by doing actions. You need to do baby steps, just little things every day in the right direction to become that. And you have to commit to enjoying the journey. The yucky parts just as much as the good ones. You have to celebrate every obstacle, every blessing, and every lesson. And that's the end of my lesson number one. I would love any questions or ahas that you may have. Um, I, I'm happy to go. I'm sure the rest of the team will have something to say in a minute. But um, one of the things I learned quite early on when I first joined this business was I needed to be more learning based. Definitely. Um, I mean, I, I came along to the business knowing how hardworking I was, uh, yeah. knowing that nothing was going to um, deter me from succeeding at what I wanted to, to succeed at. Um, but I did learn quite early on that, OK, there's some gaps in my knowledge here and the only way I'm going to get better and achieve what I want is to do the learning. And what the learning does as well is improve your confidence which naturally means that you just get better anyway. Um, it's not so much about what you're learning sometimes, it's what it then does to your mindset because you feel so much more confident, which means you come across so much better, you have a better perspective on things, um, which means naturally it means that you give better advice to people. So yeah, I've made, made being learning based the core of everything that I do now. And Claire, was that easy all the time, right? It, the, the, you probably had to have some obstacles, right? It's hard to admit that about yourself sometimes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it oh, was. Me, it was. But yeah, definitely. Um, and for me, as, as a mum, as you mentioned, obviously, you know, we have busy lives. And it was, when, when am I supposed to fit that in? There was always a reason why I, would, I wouldn't be able to do that. Because I've got everything else that I'm doing running around being a crazy person. But I just realised quite quickly that it, this is probably my one thing. This is the most important thing for me. If I'm going to build the life that I want, I have to find the time. Um, and it doesn't, you know, and I think sometimes we assume as well that that learning means we have to give up two hours a day for it. You don't. It can be 10 minutes of reading or 10 minutes of watching part of a class or a recording of something. It's just commit to building the habit for it. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. And it's funny because 
when I'm hearing you say it, it was hard for me to see it for myself. And when I hear you say it, it, again, it's almost the same. I went through a lot of that same. And it's you decided to choose yourself over everyone else. Because I'll bet when we all don't think we have time, if someone raised their hand and said, come and rescue me, a lot of times we'll drop everything to make that time, right? So thank you for sharing that. Does anyone else have any questions or want to share anything on their story as well? Uh, I wouldn't mind sharing something. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think what you've said is, for me, that really hit home because I got all this um, overwhelm initially. Um, and, and instead of really plugging into training, I avoided some of it, even though knowing I needed to do it. Um, and, and that's actually fundamental. It's so important. And I think the other thing is, I was trying to reinvent Michelle in a, in a different way, being in a new business in a new country for me. Um, I thought maybe I need to reinvent myself to fit in. And only recently had the awakening to say, Michelle, you need to be you. And, and this is her. really who, who you are and you need to have the courage to go and do what you were doing at 11 years old so easily. You need to do the same thing, um, you know. And um, yeah, so that's been a very big awakening for me in the last few days. That's beautiful. You gave me goosebumps, by the way. I gave you a heart and you <laughs> gave me goosebumps. I mean, that really is it, right? It's like we somewhere along the way we've been conditioned to not think that it's okay um, because either we don't deserve it because we've made enough mistakes or we're afraid. And again, you said that word courage. And I think that is so very important. And I mentioned it before you guys, we have to all do this without judgment, right? We we're judging people. We, we grew up with that biologically. We're meant to judge so that we know what things are safe. And we've been conditioned to kind of add that. And we point our fingers at ourselves all the time and that'll come up in the, but I just love how you share that. And again, thank you for being vulnerable, both of you. Um, for joining me up here. Does anyone else want to share anything? Don't feel like you have to. We have plenty more times. And you guys pretty much went through a lot of the content in the class. So you'll you'll see more of me sharing just what you two said. No? Okay, well, let's go to lesson number two. So lesson number two. You guys, you have to commit to your vision and your big why. Michelle just set us up nicely. What will you slay dragons for? I don't mean like, what do you feel like doing, right? What are you freaking gonna slay dragons for? It's hard sometimes. What's really worth your true commitment, right? That's why they call it a big line. Again, this was, this was hard for me. It's okay if you don't know today, right? We just need to commit to being open, to dreaming and finding out the answer. And again, it takes practice just like everything. And why is this important? Because you guys, on some days, this is going to be a hard business. When you're committing to building a better life, when you're a business owner, you have hundreds of responsibilities. You have dozens of roles, right? It's hard. Recently, I heard a quote, if it's not hard at first, then it's not real change. I'm like, oh, okay. So let's go into this eyes wide open. So we're going to talk about the emotional cycle of change, which I've learned in the 12 week year, which this is like my, this is my favorite slide. This is the coolest thing ever. And again, not something I've had. You can look it up. I don't know if you guys have done the 12 week year. It's a fantastic book, partly for the realization. And partly it's a great way to get into our team. By the way, we keep saying that we're going to start doing the 12 week year in practice. We're not there either, right? Everything takes practice. So know that while I'm up here, we're, pre we're I'm pre practicing what I'm preaching on some, but everything is hard. When we fail the first time, we just have to keep going. That's my superpower, by the way, is I fail faster than anybody else. So here we are. Emotional cycle of change. You guys, seriously, this, you're going to love this. Okay, cool. Emotional. Okay, so first we're at uninformed optimism. So for those of you that are like new or those of you that can remember being new, remember you get into this business and you're like, oh my God, I am going to be the best estate agent in the world. This is so good. I'm going to make so much money. I'm going to have free time. I'm going to be the best mom. Literally, that was me. I'm going to volunteer at school. I'm never going to miss an event. I'm going to be home for my children and make sure that I have a healthy meal. I'm never going to sleep, of course, because I don't need that, but I am going to be the best business owner. This is fantastic. I'm going to build an empire Oh my God, this is the best thing. That's uninformed optimism. You're like, yay, so good. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun, right? Okay, well, 
I think we all know who that, how that works out. And I think we even, I think there's even a stat that if you don't get into production when it's about 40 days, right? So probably at week like three, you're like, oh, gosh, that person didn't call me back, right? I was so sure that my cousin was selling her house and that was going to be a deal in my pipeline. That didn't really work out. Why? I've called this person seven times. I know I'm saying compelling stuff. I have value. Don't people like me? What's going on? Why doesn't anybody answer my phone call, right? This is not easy. Oh my God, that agent didn't take my offer. I finally got a buyer who's willing to pay that price. And that uh, wrote, took someone else's offer. Rude, right? This is what we call uninformed, excuse me, informed pessimism. You're realizing like, this is hard. Holy moly. This is not what it's cracked up to be, right? There's some good stuff, but ouch and by the way i know this is supposed to be a class on inspiring you and i'm like taking you down but, but bear with me a little bit although at the same time if you think that's bad it's not because the reality is is that's just the start that's when it really all begins because you're seeing like the wheels starting to fall off the cart and you're like okay it's okay i can figure it all out i can do it all i'm spinning plates like a crazy person i'm running around now what happens now your family hates you you haven't cooked dinner you're like, I am i can't have leftovers again. I'm pretty sure that food has expired. You're like, no, no, that's fine, honey. Just eat it, right? The dog has to go outside. You're like, oh my God, I can't go out to the dog. I have an appointment. Oh my God, I can't do all of this. Everyone around you, your friends are giving you a hard time. Everyone is getting frustrated. You haven't slept for a while. It's, you guys, it gets bad. If you're not there yet, be prepared. It's coming, but don't worry, I have a solution, but it's yucky. And this is when everyone is mean to you. And what happens naturally is we are humans. And so what most people do is they kind of freak out and they go back and they call this the vicious circle or the vicious cycle, right? And this works with relationships and it works with diets and it works with everything. We all have these wonderful ideas. It gets uncomfortable. Everyone hates us. And then it's so easy when everyone hates you to go, you know what? That was a bad idea. I don't know why I believed in myself. I should have known better. I failed in the past. I was going to fail now. I shouldn't have done this. This was a really a bad plan. I'm going to go back to where I'm comfortable because at least my friends will my friends and family will be comfortable and happy. Has anyone ever felt this before? Is it just me? Just right? This happens all the time over and over and over again. So you guys, that's why you have to have the big why. And that's why I call it my rainbow bridge, right? Is you need something to get you out of that. That is so darn strong that it doesn't matter that everyone that you love hates you. It's about mindset. You have to know, that's what my rainbow bridge is, right? It's the knowing of what's needed to fill my gap and knowing what I've got to commit to so that I know what it takes. It's like an informed awareness of the things that you need to learn, master, and become. So awesome. Now that you know this, holy moly, that's easy. You're like, okay, Claire, who's an amazing leader. I watch your videos all the time, Claire. I know you sit down with people, right? How many times have you seen people at that situation of despair? Sometimes people are open to doing it and not everybody is. And I certainly haven't always to following those steps. That's what the rain, that's why I call it rainbow bridge. When you get to those steps, you guys, whoop, you see we're up at the top and it's a steep curve. You get to informed optimism. What does that mean? That means I'm going to have to call these people seven to 12 times before they're even going to pick up the darn phone. I have to call them more than every other estate agent is going to do it. If you think about it that way, it's not that bad, right? You have to outpace everybody else. You know how they say, like, if there's a bear in the forest, like, you don't have to be the fastest. You just can't be the slowest, right? So it's kind of like that. You got to know, I have to make more phone calls. I'm going to have to call a lot of people and they're not going to call me back. Sometimes my feelings are going to get hurt. I'm just going to brush that off. I got that dirt off the shoulder kind of style, right? Like whatever. Sometimes I'm going to have a yucky day. And guess what? My children are going to have to learn to cook a little bit and leftovers are just going to be part of our lives. Now, maybe I'll do some meal prep, whatever, right? And I only wash my hair twice a week. So that's another wonderful sacrifice. But whatever it is, you get to informed optimism. This is what I want. This is what it's going to cost. And I am willing to get it done. And I will figure out whatever it takes to get there. And the cool thing, you guys, and it says this in the 12 week year, once you get here, they call it, it's a given because when you can get to that level, you start to get to a, an opportunity to get into some momentum because it just gets to be a habit. You're like, oh my God, 
someone calls you back that you called 12 times three months ago. They're finally like, oh my God, I finally am ready. You're like, oh, I wrote you off. Like, so I, I don't know who you are, right? But that starts happening and you start to believe in it and you start to trust. And then on here, it, on the 12 week year, it says that you'll get to success and fulfillment. Um, and of course, Gary Keller, if you ever watched my class, would go, no, no, that we never get there. We just make new goals and you have to go to the next level. But in any case, for here, this is where you can be. So the point is, you guys, if you want to create an extraordinary life, right, it's called extra, extra for a reason, then be prepared because it's going to take a bit extra, at least at the start. Personally and bold, thankfully, we, we had to make 100 contacts a week. I was like, when they first said that, there's this thing called the bold 100, and that's making 100 contacts in a day. And you guys, oh my God, that's called a bold 100. And when I heard about a bold 100, I thought it was 100 contacts in a week. And I was like, I am never doing that. Well, you know, I got stuck in that role of responsibility. So I did a bold 100 in person. It literally changed my life. But the cool thing about all of this is I love data. I'm obsessed with patterns. So we had 60 people in the room making 100 phone calls or contacts a week. That means I was able to see true data. And what I learned by watching these patterns is that statistically, you're going to need to hear about 97 to 99 no's to get one yes. Did you hear that? And by the way, it can be the same people. So you're calling them seven times in a week. They do get to get counted. So don't feel like you have to know 7,000 people. It isn't that. It's really about the contacts and the touches. So you just need to know. And by the way, you guys, that's before you even begin working with the clients, right? So we're talking about extra. So if you don't have a drive to do that extra push, maybe you'll, have, you'll sell a few homes, right? You'll have some level of success naturally because of the people around you. Maybe you'll maintain your current lifestyle. But I believe that it's going to take something extra special to push you to the next level of achievement and not settle. So how can you put this into action? Well, first of all, you need to set your vision and your big why. You need to open your mind to grow, just like Claire and Michelle, we were just sharing that, right? We had to, we had to be open. You need to read books, books of people that, you, that have been there before you. You may be subscribed to podcasts. I love the Empire Builders. That's one of my favorite ones. And again, I have a hard time making time for that on my on my calendar. The one thing, some of these are amazing, you guys. Take classes, whether it's from me, the Ignite. And by the way, take them again and again and again and again until you have mastered it. Do the funeral exercise. Everyone's scared of that. That was life-changing for me. You need to have a compass. And here we go, and no one ever likes this one, but be open to lots of journaling in any form. You should see this as a board meeting with yourself, to be quite honest, right? This is a scientific thing. Journaling is a scientific thing. It's not just about little girls with hearts and flowers, although you can bet every once in a while I'm certainly drawing some flowers in mine. I wish I could draw a unicorn, but I haven't figured that out yet. Not yet. The next thing, you guys, you should commit to a 66-day challenge and time block whatever it takes to get to mastery. And by the way, I've sent bold planners. I think I sent, how many bold planners have we sent? I think we sent about 150 bold planners. I spent about $6,000 at the end of the, the beginning of the year sending bold planners out to everybody. So for those of you that have it, use it. On July 1st, there is a new 66-day challenge in your bold planner. If you don't have one, just go online, put in 66-day challenge, and join us. Maybe we'll all do it together. But do whatever it takes, you guys, because to get your most beautiful life, you're going to have to do what it takes, and you're going to have to be willing to burn the ships. I decided that I want to live a year in France and I'm going to live both places. That won't be my only thing, but I'd like a year of traveling in France and running my business from Paris. So I took my phone and I turned the settings to French. Je parle français un peu. Um, but you should see me driving around San Francisco and this lady's directing me and I have a terrible sense of direction and I'm not even the best driver. And here I am having to figure this out in French because I'm going to do whatever it damn takes to learn French, right? Whatever it takes. So yeah, at the end of that. lesson number two. Go ahead, Jenny. Can I add something to that? Yeah. So it's she's been doing this so long that her iPhone auto corrects to French. <laughs> so when she sends text messages, luckily I took a little French in high school, but when she sends text messages, some of the words are in French. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's it's awesome. We all get to learn French. <laughs> <laughs> That's my informed pessimism. Any questions? Does everyone understand and know the 60 to 6 day challenge or the funeral exercise? This would be a great time to ask questions.
I don't know about the funeral exercise. I can, I can share on that one. Um, so the funeral exercise is when you're imagining your life, like, you know, like, what do I want in my life? Cause that was me. Again, I was a very hard worker. I mentioned I've been running the number two team in my office for five years. I only did the funeral exercise last year. I decided I wanted a bigger and better life. My kids are graduating. It's time for me to have my life. And I had no idea what I wanted. I just didn't know. So the funeral exercise is when you look at, okay, imagine you're at your own funeral and there are four people that are going to speak about you. And what would you like for them to say? So someone from your family, what do you want them to say about you? I know I want to say I'm the, I was always there. I love them more than anybody else. Those kinds of things. I want someone from my business world. Patrice was inspiring. She did what she said. She, she was a fantastic agent, like whatever that takes someone from your community. Patrice always gave back. I knew that she was there. And then someone from like your friend circle, life of the party, always having fun. So you're, that was, these are mine, by the way, you can have your own, but so you want to look at that and how is that helpful? Do you see how that could be helpful? Knowing what's important to me. Now I can start building a life that will get me to those things. Because for me, what I realized by doing that is that my life, I thought that if I died, I was very confident that some those things would get said about me, but only in a very small circle. What it made me realize is that I like that and I like who I am, right? And Michelle mentioned that a little bit too. I like who I am. I just want to do more of what's impactful. I wanted to supersize that and put had a have a bigger impact. I wanted that community to expand. I wanted my family to have more opportunity. Again, moving to France, I wanted that. So that was my thing. Does that make sense, Kara? Yeah, that makes sense. And I, to be honest, I really, really like that concept. And I can see how it could like inspire you to change and uh, like almost help give you focus and direction, you know? Yeah. And by the way, I learned that from Ben Taylor. He's teaching the goal class tomorrow. So um, again, this is all Keller Williams stuff that we're learning and sharing. It's a fantastic exercise. And I did it a light level. And then I have done with some of those, I've been able to go deeper and then some of those, I have not been able to go as deep as I want to. So I have like a very light funeral exercise done. And then I meant, and I have an intention of really getting deep of what I truly want. And I'm not ready to go there yet. And that's okay too, right? Is to not be in judgment for the parts that you want. We always think as a society that we're all or nothing, black or white. That's not how life works, right? It's just all about gray. So do the parts that you can. And then for me and my, I, again, we do journaling a lot is right in the back, which you're not ready to go for. Cause you guys, some of this is going to pull up things. that's going to bring up patterns. If we're doing it right, there are going to be things that you are not ready to face when you, when they're going to come up, give yourself permission to write that in the back of a journal and set it on a thing. I'm acknowledging it and we're not going to go there. And yet I've moved that out of my consciousness so that I can take my step forward too. So any other questions? And does the 66 day challenge sound fun? You guys want to join us? Best way to form a habit. Right? I'd, I'd love to join somebody, um, you know, accountability partner with, with mine. That's, uh, well, I'm sure you guys can do that at your office. And we talk about that. Yeah. Michelle, Michelle is like my primer. She's literally, that will come up in the conversation of you guys are literally going through my material before I get there. So thank you, Michelle. That'll be great. But yeah, I think we're going to do something on social media. Jenny mentioned that she just sent that out. I don't know if it was last night or this morning to our team. So we want to make sure that everyone does that with us. So yeah, so look out for that. And I was trying to decide if we're going to form a Facebook group or just, just start posting it publicly because again, whatever you do, Michelle, what I do, Claire, Kara, we get to inspire somebody else who needs to see us do it first. Right. I'm on board for that. Yay. Okay, Jenny, you're in charge. Jenny's on here. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Jenny. Yay. Any more questions before we move to lesson number three? No, let's go. Lesson number three. Okay, you guys, we need to know, understand. Oh, sure, guys. Sorry. Sorry, Danny. What was the name of the podcast you said you love? Empire? Oh, Empire Builders. And that's, um, so I don't know if some of you are going to amplify with the dolls. It's that group. Are you going to that, Claire? It's so good. And it just, it comes out every Monday. The one thing is good. Ben Kinney also has one that's good too. I don't always relate as much to Ben Kinney. I absolutely respect what he says, but sometimes for me, I'll pop in, but Empire Builders, I hit every time. The one this week was about self-care and they're putting it in a two week lesson and they're short and sweet. Sometimes I'll do a line cooking or whatever. It's real simple. Anyway, you'll love that one. 
Awesome. And by the way, Seychelle Van Poole on there, who's like a total leader rock star who does a lot of amazing classes. I know we've learned from her quite a bit. So she's one of the five um, that's in there. Okay, you guys, lesson number three, know, understand, and build trust with yourself. So get ready. I'm going to do my little thing. So one of my favorite movies that I watch with my kids is The Count of Monte Cristo. And my favorite line, here we go. I'm still your man, Zatara. I swore an oath and I will protect you, even if it means I must protect you from yourself. So I love that line. And of course, I know it's I do a bad rendition of it. But I love that line about the protect you from yourself. Because you guys, we have to do this for ourselves. It is your responsibility, responsibility, yours, to master your vision, your values, and your self-knowledge. Nobody else's. As parents, as leaders, and as friends, we're often doing things for everybody else at the expense of ourselves. And you guys, I'm not saying being selfish, yet I am saying that to be your best self, you need to create a high level of respect and value for yourself. And you need to love the good, the bad, and the ugly. It is your job to protect your time, your ideas, and your energy. And I believe that it helps when you're in the habit of earning your own trust and your own respect on a daily basis. So for me, I started a morning routine last year where I was reading and writing. I read my MVVBP every day, my GPS. My, uh, I never got to my 401. I'm still working on that, right? I'm a work in progress. But I did my MVVBP. I needed to know who am I every day so that I can make the very best decisions, right? I had my GPS, all of these things. And I also had a sheet where I wrote down things that I needed to hear. And on mine, it says, every day I read this, it is my personal responsibility to know what I need and want for myself and the people in my life and business. I model my own standards, right? And I don't know, if you don't know yourself as well as you could, no big deal and no judgment, right? Most of us don't. But if you want a life by design, right? And Michelle talked about that earlier, right? Build your life around who you are. Build your business around who you are. Then let's consider that maybe it's time as a responsible business owner, as a responsible partner, and a responsible human to find that out. And I can promise that me being that direct made some people uncomfortable, maybe a lot of people uncomfortable, and that's okay. I said that directly for a reason. So I think one of my superpowers is that I have the courage to ask very provocative questions, even to myself. So here come a few more of my favorite fierce conversations questions. So, um, I'm, so grab a pen and fierce conversations, another amazing, amazing book, life changing. I listen to it all the time. It's made me a better negotiator, a better human, a better partner, everything, but um, anyway, get ready. Here we go. Number one, what is your purpose? If you don't know your purpose, you guys, how can you time block for what's important versus what's urgent? I'm sure you've all heard that expression. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Now in real estate, there are a lot of activities, right? 192 tasks. Only some of them are going to take you in the right direction. You need to think of this as your system for decision making, right? So you just have to have a purpose. Next one, question two, what is your unique value proposition? And I think I've heard you guys call it a unique selling. So the UVP or a USP, right? In our business, our value proposition is actually what we're selling. It's not the houses, that's how we get paid. We're compensated by when the houses close, but what we're selling is our value proposition and who we are. Right. In the United States, no one needs an agent to buy or sell a house. Nobody needs it. I'm a luxury. Right. And I'm compensated very well. If I don't know my value, how can I share it? How can you sell yourself using your value if you don't know? And by the way, I didn't know that a long time. I'm like, oh, I work harder than anybody else. Just sign the paperwork. Don't ask me any questions. I swear to God, I'm good. Just trust me. I can't I can't articulate it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm good. Right. You can't do that anymore. And you guys, I didn't know mine for a very long time. I didn't know my value. So again, no judgment. The next question, and this is a big one. Are you in integrity with yourself? Do you have a habit of breaking tiny promises to yourself? Maybe by choosing other people's priorities first, usually to avoid drama or stress. Maybe you're not practicing self-care and maintenance. Maybe you're not doing the lead generation and business activities that you've committed to doing. 
And maybe you're just not giving your best. I know for me, one of my leading values is being my best. And yet I book myself so much that it is physically impossible for me to be my best because there's no way that I can prepare for every single appointment. That's a big thing that I had to face and change. I just wasn't being my best. I was so busy overbooking because I wanted to be everything to everybody else that I wasn't, I wasn't myself for my, one of my leading values. I was not in integrity with myself. And you guys, I believe that this will erode your sense of trust and cause you to doubt yourself. And we see that in the language when we talk about ourselves. I'm sure you've heard yourself say something. You're like, I can't believe I just said that about myself, right? We say that it's not always awesome. So in order to make the best decisions, you guys, in order to be appropriate in the moment, we need to know that we can count on ourselves. And trust must be earned every day, over and over, and it takes action. And why is this important in a business class? Well, how can you possibly sell yourself if you're not, if you don't have a habit of doing what you say, even to yourself, right? That seed of doubt will color every conversation you have and it will creep into every relationship. Your self-trust or your self-doubt is present in every, in everything you do. And especially on a sales call in a presentation when you're stressed, whether you're aware of it or not, imagine like you're thinking and you're conveying to your client and imagine if you said out loud what you're feeling inside. You're like, Mr. Seller, I'm pretty darn confident that I'm going to do about 62 to 87 percent of all that I've committed to for you. Yikes. That'd be terrible, right? But a lot of times that's how we feel about ourselves. We know we're pretty good, but we also don't know we won't always commit to doing what it takes, right? So I've personally found that to grow a really big business to lead a really special team, your family and your clients, that you're gonna be your best when you know that you have what it takes, right? That's my Wonder Woman stance. Sometimes you gotta do that too. You have to know and you have to believe in yourself this way. And it comes by building up a pattern of trust and success that's very hard to break and easy to convey. So how can you put this into action? Well, first, you have to learn who you really are with no judgment. There is such valuable data that's found in your natural patterns that we can work to your advantage. And we call that our driving values, right? And again, you've heard about this. This is partly from goal setting to the now, or also it's a class called how billionaires set goals. So how do you start? Well, you guys hate to say, how do you start this? It's by some form of journaling. It is so important to get it out where you can see what you've been doing, what's been happening so that you can pay attention to your natural patterns. You need to know what types of things always interfere. When I really have great intentions, but it just doesn't get done, what types of things were it, was it that I was putting in front of myself, right? Especially when you intend to do the right thing and didn't, you're like, what happened again? What value was that feeding? Because it was something. You made that choice for a reason, right? We're adaptive creatures. We're doing that because we were getting something that was more important to us, whether we realize it or not, right? That's why we call it a driving value. So we want to use this to our advantage once we find this out, which is so cool, right? We want to exploit our natural tendencies. And Michelle, you said something at the beginning, and it reminds me, when I watched Bold one of the time, Diana Kokoska is just amazing. She's phenomenal. I've taught, I've learned coaching skills class from her. I've taken Bold seven times over and over again. (laughs) Phenomenal. And so she talked about in one of the, uh, the videos, and it said, you need to start paying attention to your patterns. Things just keep repeating in your life, whether you're aware of it or not, right? So what things are you doing that you're just not quite getting the results that you need to tweak? What things are you doing that you need to cut out of your life because they're truly unhealthy? And most importantly, because what we focus on expands, that's a bold law. Most importantly, what are the things that I'm doing well that if I supersize that and made them more impactful would actually give me a better result, right? Doing more with less. So... That's what we're looking to do. So we want to use that data to our advantage. We want to exploit our natural tendencies and stop fighting them. Stop fighting ourselves and trying to change everything. Just start leveraging your self-conscious. So what do I mean for this? For example, for instance, if you're motivated by recognition, by the way, these are all mine. So yeah, I like recognition. I didn't like to admit that about myself, but I do. I like people to like me. Sorry, it is what it is. I'm a people pleaser. Love it. I've made a huge career out of that, by the way. Then you, if you that's you, then create some outside accountability. Look for a coach that you want to impress. 
look for a peak performance partner. And mine's Erin Wheelock. She's not on here with me today. We teach classes all around. She's fantastic. She says what I don't want to hear. And I respect her for it. That's how she got to be my peak performance partner. You need someone. Find an accountability partner. However it is, find someone that will give you that outside accountability, that recognition that will feed your insides. If you like competition, oh yeah, that's me. Holy moly, I love competing with people. They don't even know. If you like winning, you're a team player, a sportsman, great. Then find someone that you respect. It has to be someone you respect, you guys. Someone that's a true competitor, hopefully someone above you. And let's make it a game. Make it a competition. I'm going to call more people than you. I'm going to get more people. That's why I was so good and bold. They let you put little stickers on the paper. Actually, they're like a little house. There is no way that I'm going to let... I had a couple of people that were my really close friends. And this one guy, Brendan Moran, love him. He's still, we play golf together now. I was never going to let that guy get more stickers than me. One of my best friends ever, but there's no way I was going to let him win. So I had to, so to drive, it made me a better person. And by the way, you don't even have to know. Part of the reason I have a lot of Instagram followers is because I found someone and I wanted, I, they, we had the same number of things. And I just was like, oh, you are not going to win this competition. Again, make it fun, right? It doesn't matter. There's not a real competition. No one wins, but it makes everything more fun, right? And then next, if you guys like helping others, making a difference, this is my, my main value. And that's what I found. If you're cut, if you're not doing for yourself because someone has raised their hand and asked for help. Uh oh, sorry, I don't know what happened to my presentation. Sorry, you guys. Um, anyway, if you if that's you, then look for a leadership opportunity. I'm sure Claire can help you. Commit to helping somebody else. You can do teaching, partnering with a new agent. You'll learn faster. And you're going to be more bold in service of others the way that I was, right? So basically, once you know your vision, your values, and you trust yourself, you're all set to begin building your best life. So that's the end of lesson three. And I'm going to get us back onto our slide while you guys have any questions or ahas, whatever anybody wants to share. And you guys, you can share stories, whatever it takes. Again, this is a class for all of us. Can I can I share something again? Is it all right? Um, yeah. Uh, from what what I understand, also is um, you have a sort of an old or current reality, which can be good or bad, um, and then you you have a reality that you would like to achieve, which is your goal um, uh, based on your thoughts and emotions and projections and your legacy and and so on so it's almost like I felt to get a in the journaling also to get a piece of paper and write down your current or your old reality with your stuckness what's keeping your individuality stuck the thing that you know is you that you actually need to go out and do tomorrow and so that stuckness um, writing that down on a piece of paper and then getting another piece of paper and writing your your actual reality that you want, which takes commitment and courage, um, and and that legacy, you know, um, sort of in reverse, speaking backwards, and then taking the old reality piece of paper and taking a match and burning it, and saying from tomorrow, I'm now starting to work on the actual reality I want to create. I like that. And again, use the word courage because you guys, this all does take courage, right? Mm. It's at least courage. for me, it can be scary. Courage. Yeah. I mean, courage and pig headed discipline and determination is what gets you what you want in the end. And, and that's why the 66 day challenge is so important. It's so hard to form a no, new habit. I've, I'm honestly, before I use the 66 day challenge, I would do well for about a week to 10 days and you'd think that after seeing all those ticks in a list you know that that you know you'd stick with it from there but it's it only takes one thing to happen which throws you off your routine and then you can't get back into it again um but yeah printing off a new 66 day challenge calendar each time I want to form a new habit is the only thing that helps me to get back into a, a new a new habit to, to take you know steps to achieving what I want Absolutely. And I know my first 66 day challenge, it took me a couple of tries, by the way, it didn't work out. I didn't like 66 day challenge. It's kind of as Claire was saying, for those of us that are stubborn and determined, like that's awesome in business. 
it's lousy for change, which by the way is necessary for business. So we have to see what our real things are so that we know how to work around ourselves. We almost have to outsmart ourselves a little bit, right? And it sounds more fun when you say it that way, because I'm also very stubborn. So it was like, uh, I'm not changing. I'm not, I won't even change when I'm trying to change. I'm like, wait, what? You're going to have to choose one. Um, so I have to make it worth it and make it fun. And it did take me try after try after try, which is again, why that outside accountability is helpful, right? Hence our Jenny's going to, Jenny's got us covered. We're all going to be 66 day challenging this up in six, what? I don't know. 66 days from July 1st, we'll be high fiving. And by the way, if some of you, if it takes you starting four 66 day challenges within 66 days, I would consider that a huge success. Personally, I would consider that more successful than those people that can do 66 days, in my opinion, because that's a harder thing to accomplish is to fail and restart four times than if someone just got all the way through. So that I believe is a better lesson personally, for me anyway. Anyone else have anything on there? Are we getting journal excited over here? Like, oh my God, Patrice talks about this a lot. And I feel like you guys set me up for lesson number four as well, which is you need to submit, step away from that ego. And I didn't think I had one. I was like, I'm the most humble person I know. Well, I'm humble as far as like, I'm regular, but I also was stubborn and thought that I didn't, I was hard. I had something to prove all the time. I would choose the harder path. Now I realize that was my ego making that decision. That's not a rational thing to do. I was, just, I was trying to prove something. That's my ego. Not, that's not awesome, right? So personally, I found it helpful to accept, and I love this when I say this to myself all the time, the things that have gotten you here are also the same things that are holding you back from your next level. So now what? Okay, well, now we trust ourselves. Yay, isn't this awesome, right? So now that you trust yourself, you guys, this is where you can make it work because now you can really begin to trust the models, right? The Keller Williams models or whatever success models that you're choosing. You guys, they're proven. It was only our actions. It was only us that wasn't proven. That's why we haven't done it. There's literally a book, right? You chose Keller Williams. And by the way, if you didn't come to Keller Williams and you're just a guest, that's awesome. That's okay too. But read the book because we literally have a roadmap for unbelievable success in real estate. I mean, it's proven. Gary Keller is a brilliant man. This guy actually has a degree in real estate, which nobody has. But even he didn't write the book from his ideas. Right. 20 years ago, he went out because he's freaking this, the brilliant part. He went out and said, let me find the most successful agents ever and find out what they're doing. So he sat there and he researched scores of top agents. He looked at their systems. He tracked their patterns and said, what are the similarities? And this guy documented what was working at a ridiculously high level. He simplified it and he made a recipe for building a big business in real estate. It's really that simple, right? So how can you put this into action? Well, first, you need to read the MREA. That's, that's lesson number one. Over and over and over. And I can't tell you, people ask me all the time, how many times, Patrice? Well, I don't know. I'm guessing enough time that it takes you to master implementation of it, right? Or until you created the level of success that you desire at that time. And again, think of success as levels, right? Which is cool. So read it until you get to that level, master that, enjoy it for a minute because we do want to celebrate. And then you can make your decision of, am I comfortable here or do I want to supersize it? And then we jump back in and you read that again and you build another rainbow bridge, whatever it takes, right? But I will say you guys, I'm a girl, surprise, right? We got some girls on, I have all girls on my screen. We have guys here too, love everyone. What we all do know is that in the past, right? Women's opportunities have not always been equal around the world. We hear people say that all the time. Guys are tired of hearing it. Some girls are tired of hearing it. It is a reality in some business. You guys, it's not that reality in this business. You can do anything you want. This is an equal opportunity business like no one that you've ever seen. So I just always like to challenge people. Think about what you can do for yourself. And also, it might be kind of fun to think about who the other people. My team, some of my teams on this phone call, Part of the reason that I am who I am is because I have other people that that trust me to support them. So I need to be the kind of leader that can take care of Ginny and Liz and Danielle and Avery and Duck and Nikki. And we just hired Michelle, right? Like I have all of these people looking up to me, right? If I just said, okay, this is how many houses I need to sell to go on a fancy vacation. 
they wouldn't have that opportunity. And it's okay. Again, no judgment. It's okay. You don't have to want that, especially those of you that have kids at home. But again, it's kind of fun to put that a little bit later too, because this is a really cool opportunity. Sorry, I didn't mean to get onto that uh, girl power bandwagon. So <laughs> bear with me. So next, you guys, you guys need to place yourself in situations to be around other people that are at above and even below that are on similar journeys to you, right? We talk about having that circle of five. Gary talks about that quite a bit. You need to find people and surround yourself with people that have similar values, that have similar styles and similar beliefs that are having high, level of, uh, high levels of success and you need to learn from them, right? And it doesn't have to just be humans. It can be books, podcasts. You could watch leaders in Keller Williams, agents, other business leaders from other, from other walks of life. It doesn't matter. But you guys be prepared because all of this is going to take time. It's going to take energy and it's going to take brain power. Because remember, we're creating. And dude, that's special. So you need to respect it and you have to respect yourself. You have to be sure that you've set yourself up for success. And in Keller Williams, we call that time blocking and building a bunker. What does that mean? You have to put it on your calendar. You have to make sure that no one's going to bother you during your lead generation calls, your time calls, right? That you have to respect that time and teach others how to respect it as well. You have to protect the time to work on your business, not just the time to work in your business, although you got to do that too. And remember, and this is something I learned at uh, France from Union from Alex Brandau, it's a recipe, not a menu. You have to do all of the steps appropriately, not pick and choose what's fun and what isn't. It's not this works for me and that doesn't. You'll end up with a different result, right? Now, some of you might be scared of that, right? They're like, oh God, now I have to believe in all of this stuff and that's yucky. And some of you guys are actually like, I would have been like, yay, I'm so excited. I can avoid lead generation a little bit longer. But that only brings us to the last lesson. So drum roll, I'm leaving that as a cliffhanger. So that's the end of my lesson number four. Any other questions on that one? Or thoughts, because that one's out there too. Well, I've, I've mentioned it many times, but you've, you've mentioned there obviously about the um, the time blocking in the bunker. That's from the one thing. Um, so those of you on the call that haven't read the one thing yet or listened to, um, you know, the audio book for it, you do. Because without mastering how to prioritize the tasks and without time blocking it into your calendar and, as you say, create a bunker so that you can't be distracted, um, it's almost impossible for you to be able to stay on track in, in my view, in my view. Absolutely. How can you get it? If you don't give yourself the time to get it done, it doesn't matter how good you think you are, right? You have to have time. Everything takes time and usually a lot longer than we think, right? And yeah, it's again absolutely. about building that habit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, used, I've said to the guys before, you know, I've, there was a business I was involved in for 15 years before I came to Keller Williams. And I spent the, all of those 15 years just turning up every day and putting out fires and just reacting to what landed on my desk. I just I had a whole list of things that I'd like to accomplish that stayed on there for until the paper, you know, looks old and curly because I still hadn't done the tasks that I'd set myself because I was just looking after everyone else. But you know, you, you do have to block that time out to get the most important things done for your business or else you'll either be working crazy hours and burn yourself out because you won't be doing self-care, as you say, Patrice. Um, or you just, you know, you're, not, you're never going to you're never going to be working on the tasks that are most important to drive your business forward. Absolutely. And again, you've, you've seen this. And, and as Claire's saying, again, this is nothing. This isn't necessarily new material. I'm hoping I can say it in a more provocative way that sometimes I'm more direct than people on these things. But you have to do it, you guys. You have to. We are all in the habit of doing what everyone else wants to do. Sometimes I say this. Remember, it's like you're living with your parents, right? And you're like, they are like, follow directions. Do what I say. And I always joke like my parents never turn that off. They forgot to tell me okay, now you get to go make your own choices. So I'm living this pattern of do what everybody wants, keep everybody happy, everybody needs, right? Take care of your responsibilities was all I've been doing. I just didn't know. They never turned that off and goes, okay, now it's your turn to make the decisions. I'm not your parent anymore. You're not living in my house. You need to design your life and you decide, again, what's important versus what's urgent because there's nonstop urgent, especially in this business. We've solved problems for living. 
which means that we're we are literally chose a role of looking for problems. So if we don't put ours first, and, and again, starts with, if we don't know our priorities, and if we don't make time to make them important, then no one else is going to care because they all have their own prices. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else want to say anything before we move on to lesson number five? Drum roll. Okay. Lesson number five. Don't be surprised, people. You have to earn it. Just, just say, right? You're going to have to work hard, at least at first. You have to commit to your business. You have to live your standards and your habits. And what do I mean by that? Well, I believe everyone has standards. They're not necessarily always happy to admit it, even to themselves, maybe especially to themselves, right? So what is a standard? Well, I don't know the definition. And to be honest, I don't really care. But I'll tell you what my coach tells me. A standard isn't what you say that you want. It's not what you write in your manual. A standard is what you will tolerate. And this is your business, right? So in your business, to have the most success, you're going to need to be clear on what your standards are. You're going to have to draw a line and you're going to need to systematize that. Everything's about the systems, right? So in my opinion, we need to have standards of excellence. So we're going to start with number one, standard of service. You need to be your best. You need to always deliver over the top service. In my opinion, you need to be surprising them every day. May or may not come as a shock, but I worked at Disney World for a couple of summers in college. So, and they teach us, there's literally Disney University, right? We're cast members. We're cast members, they call it that instead of employees because they want us to remember that we are always on show, right? This is a presentation. It's all about giving an experience and every detail counts. The devil's in the details, they say, right? You guys, your job is to exceed expectations, not meet them, exceed, right? And it's funny, I have Danielle on here. She's a new agent in my uh, on my team and I was referred a deal. And this person is like, I only want you, Patrice. I know you do. Everybody wants me. I'm just kidding. It was a referral. So of course you wanted me, right? I'm the name on the thing. So I'm like, you're going to love Danielle. She's fantastic. Danielle's a, a new agent. By the way, she's also fantastic. So she's, so I'm, I pushed her off to this new client, Hillary. This weekend, Hillary met Danielle. Danielle did a walkthrough and Hillary sent me a text unprompted and said, you were totally right. She is an absolute rock star, right? So I'm so excited. I shared that with the team. We did a little celebrating and then in I did celebrating. So, and then I told Danielle, you need to journal on this. I want you to celebrate all the stuff you've done well. And then I said, and then now you need to find out what can you do better next time, right? Not because she did anything wrong. It's because we always want to get better because this is our business, right? And for her to be her best, we just don't ever stop, right? Exceed expectations. You guys, I actually have a, um, a review. Sorry, here I am really bragging on myself. On my Yelp, I have someone that wrote something and it says that my customer service was the best that they've ever received in any industry, hands down. That's what I'm trying to exceed every time is I want people to say that. And by the way, this guy is a physician. He uh, does research. He's a professor. His wife's a, an engineer and a professor. They've traveled all around the world and they said, little old me, I'm like, oh my God. I'm the best service they've ever had. You guys, I didn't think I was doing anything special. That's the reality, right? That is my job, is to give the best experience. Because why? We're compensated really well in this business, right? The, when we're closing deals, it's a lot of money per hour for that transaction. The problem is the, the gaps in between. We're compensated well. And you guys, our commission is flexible, right? We have to negotiate that out every time too. So for me, I know I need to give over the top service. I need to give extra. Why? Because I expect a full commission, darn it. And I get it, right? It's so much easier when I'm expecting to be compensated. I get paid more than the average agent in my commission. My, my team leader just asked me and I wasn't able to because I was busy, but she asked me to speak because everyone else is discounting their commission because they want listings so bad and I'm not. I stand there and say, this is what I charge. I charge five and a half percent. Yes, I'm sure you can find someone for five all day long. This is why these are the results you're going to get and I'm worth it, right? It's so much easier to say that when I know at my core that I can provide those results that I'm delivering. If I didn't, by the way, I should say when I didn't, I discounted just like everybody else and I nearly begged for that deal. And now I don't. I literally, people want me more than I want them, right? It makes a difference. So you have to know that at your core 
And the only way to get there is by delivering it and knowing that you're the best, right? Next, you need to have standards of your habits. Where you spend your time matters. So when you take bold class and you raise your hand, the answer is always lead generation. So if they ask a question and you're like, I wasn't paying attention, if you just say lead generation, you're probably right, right? So yes, the answer is always lead gen. But even when you're not lead generating, you have to decide, commit, and maintain to a standard of business practice that you're able to be accountable to. For me, I will never go under 50 contacts a week. And by the way, you guys, I usually get somewhere between 62 to 110. I like to exceed, but my standard, will I will never come close. And by the way, I'm not a standards girl. I'm not that girl that hits minimum standards. I just won't do it, right? I expect because I've proven to myself that I'm always better than average, right? So make sure you're thinking of that too. Don't set something where you're going to set yourself up for failure. We're trying to build up that pattern of success too. So here is some some ideas that you can do. And, my, and you guys can take a picture of this slide because there's lots on here. You can write it down. So you might decide, and it's up to you. You don't have to do these all at once, by the way, but pick some. How many social media posts are you going to commit to a week? How many contacts are you going to commit to calling every week? How many valuations are you going to practice doing? Don't just do a valuation when somebody needs you, you guys. If you want to be a master, you better have it everywhere. I took a class um, from Craig Rieger. He's amazing. He has a 90 listings in 90 days. And he talks about for his team, they do a social media post and says, who do you know? You know, I just hired a new team member and I'm trying to practice valuations. I want to be the best of the best. Who, whose house can I value? You don't have to want to sell it. You just need to start practicing. By the way, that's lead generation and valuation practice. Isn't that awesome? Super size. How many hours are you going to spend learning your market knowledge? Nobody does this. It's crazy, but right how many houses are you going to go into that you don't have clients for so that you can know what houses are worth? It takes practice, you guys. That's one of the hardest things. I'm still uncomfortable when it says, what's my home worth? I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. Oh my God, I don't know. I do know, but it still makes me nervous. And it's hard to make that determination. It's a lot of money we're talking about, right? Practice it. How often do you practice your contract? Let me tell you, I took my contract to bed every night for weeks when I was a new agent. I could pretty much go through a contract without one in my hand. I was obsessed. I moved here at 30 in a neighborhood where everyone's average age was 50. My family is in Louisiana. I was all by myself over there. There's no way I was, I don't know, I have the worst sense of direction. There's no way that I was going to beat anybody on business at relationships or market knowledge for a minute. But I can tell you what, no one was ever going to out contract me. So for those of you that are new agents, the contract is a big deal. Master that. Become really good at it and find something that will be your cornerstone of your uh, confidence, right? That was mine. How about marketing skills? That's why they're hiring us, you guys. Have you really studied marketing that you like and learned what sells? Presentation, negotiation. Are you taking classes to be, you're an expert negotiator. I'm a damn good negotiator. The best. Love it. I negotiate from the very start. People don't even know that I'm negotiating with them from the very beginning. And I consider that's my specialty is I'm always negotiating. I don't mean I'm negotiating of this is what I want. What I mean is I've considered negotiation setting up the terms so that people will want what I have more than they do. So anyway, whatever that is, is you should be practicing that. How about writing marketing, not marketing copy? There is a difference between writing bullet points of what a house has and writing it in a way that will be compelling that makes a buyer want to buy your listing. You need to practice that. Contract skills, marketing, whatever it is, right? Customer service, you could take classes, staging, presentation, whatever it is, you need to commit to it, right? And why is all of this imp is important? Well, I'm sure that you will be, it won't be a surprise to learn that the rate of you converting leads into appointments and appointments into contracts and contracts into closings, well, as your skills increase, you're going to be better able to sell yourself with more confidence and actually get more stuff done, right? And you guys, this is the fun stuff. This is where you really get to stand apart from the competition. This is where you build your arsenal. And to simplify for my high D's and high C's in the rooms, these are the activities that you fill your calendars with and time block when you don't have business. And even when you get super busy, this is the stuff that you have to protect for. Because this is where you decide with your actions what things are your commitments and what things are just an interest. And again, there's no judgment, right? But you need to know. You need to start being intentional, no matter how many Google alarms it takes. And I say it like that because Duck on my team, he's a single dad with, with a couple of kids. 
when he's doing a, um, a new something, I make him set like five Google alarms in the day to get it done because I know, and he knows that he's got a lot of very important, that his children are important. When they're hungry, he's not gonna say, go away, I have things to do, right? He is going to get distracted. So we just have to outsmart our lives. So set 15 Google alarms, get an account, whatever it takes, right? You guys, who is your compass? Or what is your compass, right? What tools and systems do you have in places? What resources? Do you have a, a coach, a PC coach, a peak performance coach? You have those in your office. I know that through Keller Williams. And if you don't talk with Claire, I promise you that she will connect you with the right people. If you're not ready to hire a coach, she can connect you with someone that can hold you accountable. Whatever it takes you guys, you just need to get into this routine and ensure that you're keeping your mind focused in the right direction. Remember, we said earlier, if it's not hard at first and it's not real change, right? And I said, it's your job to learn and expect higher levels, levels of success. So science have actually found that using and manipulating your neuro patterns, you can increase your chances of success when making a change. And they have actually proven that visualization, ugh, can't speak. visualization is an ideal solution to building pathways to make it easier for yourself, right? So you can actually build these pathways toward a new behavior and make it simple just by visualizing. What would my optimal health look like? What would my optimal business? When I'm meeting with that seller, you need to kind of fantasize them signing the paper, you closing the deal, whatever it takes. I know it's a little, this was weird for me, by the way. So for some of you, it's going to be weird and uncomfortable. Like that's, a, no, I'm not doing this. I'm just going to call the client, right? You can do that. That's just the harder way. They've literally proven that if you're imagining it, it will be smoother when you're having that, right? Time is of the essence. I think COVID's taught us that. So how can you use this in your real estate business? Well, practice visualization. You can design and create the structure of your business. You can decide and commit to your minimum numbers of hours worked a week. A lot of times the blessings and the curses of this business. This is a flexible business, but sometimes people don't put in what they say they're going to, right? And they just lose track of time. What are you going to commit to? And you guys, you have to see yourself as your own boss, as well as seeing yourself as the employee. Right. In the 12 week year, Brian Moran says actions that um, talking about actions. And he says the difference between great and mediocre are usually just small things. We're talking about adding an extra two to three appointments a week, making an extra five or 10 calls a day. I'm not asking for you to build a mountain. Right. Three extra, just three hours a week of working on your business versus in your business. Such a small amount. What if you just start delegating or leveraging one more task? What would that do for your business? And I've separated those for a reason because I like to consider delegating as you've hired someone who's going to do that for you. And leveraging is using your tools, right? The nurture, your vision, whatever it is that Keller Williams is giving you or whatever resources that will make it easier. Do a newsletter. We started doing newsletters nine months ago. People are, they, they reach out all the time. They're saying, I'm watching your video. Oh my God, thank you for reaching out. It's it's actually doing the work for me. It did take work to get to that point, And that did have to get in the way of my lead generation for a moment. So for a minute, I was like, oh, this is uncomfortable. It doesn't look like work. We have to, again, no judgment. We have to stop changing, change what that looks like. And again, you guys, you have to practice learning to act on your commitments versus your feelings. It's another one of those like, oh, that one hurts, right? We have to practice that because we don't always do it. I don't feel like it. I mean, your kids say that about the garbage. You're not like letting the garbage build up because they don't feel like taking it out, right? So, and again, you just have to commit to this journey and begin training yourself. And here's our next lesson, standards of mindset. And again, this was kind of bring ties in some of that stuff we talked about earlier. I did say that the answer is always lead generation. And yes, you're in a sales business. So much of this is just statistics. And yet the state of our mindset and your confidence, especially about your value proposition, your skills, your standards, your service, and your results, basically your resume, right? Your confidence and belief in these is going to influence your likelihood for success, right? Your closing ratio. Because if you expect a great call, you're more likely to get it. And by the way, if you expect a yucky one, you're probably going to get that too. Remember, this business, this is your laboratory, not just your stage. What do I mean by that? Well, your real-time calls should actually be shaping your business systems. You need to be learning from it. You should be developing your communication style, what works and what doesn't. You should be tracking your systems for future improvement. You should be adjusting your scripts. Listen to the things that you say 
Listen to the things that your sellers are saying over and over again. You're going to find a pattern in that, right? Ideally, let's use this to begin building confidence with ourselves. And we always heard the term building confidence, right? I mean, that, that expression alone tells us it has to be developed, you guys. I don't ever, I didn't inherit my confidence for sure, right? It has to get there with trial and error and practice. So we want to think of your business, as I said, as a learning lab. You want to perform every day as if you're growing from each experience, not as if you're taking a test and being judged by someone. We want growth to be your objective of your lead generation as much as getting an appointment, right? Now, we read the MRA, and again, I'm all for believing in it, right? It proves to us, it's proven that every call and every contact will get you one step closer to your future, right? You could talk to 50 strangers 72, 72 times over a two-year period, and you will get one piece of business from them if you're consistent. If you're talking to your friends and relatives, you're going to get two pieces of business for every 12. You guys, that's proven. You just have to make those freaking phone calls over and over again, and you don't write someone off because it's 36 touches per year, right? So it takes two years before you know. And then my favorite mindset lesson, and this is the big one, you guys, you have to get out of judgment and stay out of it. And by the way, that starts with being very conscious to stop judging other people also. And this is life changing, you guys. It really affects every aspect and every relationship. And I have found that when you stop judging others, it magically it seems there's no more judgment in you. It's just amazing how it works out. And again, it takes practice, but it's just magic. So how can you put this into action? Well, they say the first step is the hardest. So let's just dive in. Okay, everybody, get out your pens because this is where, this is it. This is where we get to action. So I'd love for everyone to please circle all or some of the things that you may be open to implementing from this class. There's got to be something in there, right? And by the way, as I mentioned, this isn't all my material. So if you really, if I've inspired you to implement something that was from a different class, that's fine too. So write it down. But again, we want to make sure that we're going to put this into action today. And next, I'm going to ask for everybody to open your calendar. And I don't care if it's paper or Google or what, but I would love for everyone to please time block one hour and it has to be within the next 24 hour period. I don't care if you have to wake up early, if you're staying up late, whatever it is. And it's okay if it's like a one hour block or four 15s, whatever it takes. But I'm asking you to please gift yourself with one hour. And I'm going to ask you to take the step during that time for something from this or from any other class that might seem interesting. And you guys, this can be as simple as buying a journal, right? I'm talking about that a lot. You can be booking out just practicing what thinking and mapping time is. And I like to call it mapping versus planning. It sounds a lot more fun, like it's an adventure versus like a plan. It just sounds boring, but mapping out your best life. And hopefully this will be a recurring theme for you. You might want to just schedule a class. Again, I know there's a great class that's tomorrow. Booking that class can count. Maybe you want to open a savings account for a dream purchase. For those of you thinking about a fancy car or a home or a vacation, go open that savings account during that time. If you're thinking about changing your health, go buy some running shoes. Or maybe you want to consider scheduling a very needed fierce conversation with someone or with yourself. Maybe you want to order a book, ask a mentor, whatever it is, right? My favorite is that I'm asking you to book a board meeting with yourself. You guys, journaling is not just about writing for your feelings. This is scientific, right? Every scientific uh, book you've ever read, it's about you document and recording the observations. It's the only scientific way that we can think of to look at every obstacle objectively so that you can really find and test the truest and most accurate solutions. So from now on, I'm going to ask us to decide what we're willing to commit to. And then I'm going to ask you to decide what you're willing to exchange for it. And last and finally, I'm going to push you to just do it and to do it with intentional, relentless consistency. And by the way, that's what I got that from Michael Bailey. Um, I think intentional was my my word for the year and he supersized it for me. So that's it, you guys. That's all I've got. Thank you for being with me. And I'd love any ahas or questions. And if anybody wants to share what they're willing to do, I, I would love to hear that as well. Anyone? And you guys, all of our stuff is on there. So if anybody wants to reach out, I have dozens of agents that I message with all the time. If you want to ask questions or sometimes you just want an objective person to listen to, I'm always there. Yeah. So please do follow us and um, I'm always here. I also I just wanted to say thank you, Patrice. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks very much. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. That means a lot. This is my one thing and this is what makes me really excited inside. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I also wanted to say thank you. Um, I, I um, with gratitude, got a lot out of it. It's really made me think. Um, for me, it's having a board meeting first with myself. Um, so that's been great. Thank you very much. Patrice. Thank you. Isn't that a better way to look at it? Because I know I was in judgment of the term journaling. I was like, that's what little girls do. And I know I'm supposed to be a girl, but I... I've always felt like I had something to prove that I'm I'm a valuable as a boy. So so thank you for sharing that one. That's a big one for me too. I absolutely loved that you got us to write it down and put it in our calendar right now. I love that because I've been on too many training sessions where I write lots of notes and often don't look at those notes straight away and it might be a few weeks later where I'll read through and go oh I haven't implemented that yet or I haven't done that yet whereas just at the end there for you to say to us right look at the list and do something now is brilliant absolutely brilliant well and I can't take credit for that either that's again in bold class that's one of the things that they do they have us um do a practice and you have to do it and, and it has to be within 24 hours for a reason because if you, that's the first step. So you have to take that and then it just kind of gets a little easier. It doesn't mean it's magic, of course. Um, and it certainly helps. So I'm glad. Thank you okay. so much for having me. Anyone else? Oh, Kara. Yeah. So um, really bizarrely this morning, I was walking down the stairs, um, getting Coop ready for school, getting myself ready for the day. And I was like, you know, what? I really, really think it'd be good to start journaling again, because it just because I'm just starting out. I feel like my brain is so super scattered. I'm not really focused. So I know that that always draws me back in. So um, I'm definitely going to do that. But whilst I've also got you and uh, Claire on right now, Claire, you know, I had a bit of a terrible week last week. So can we set something up in the calendar for you and I to get together as my mentor? 100%. 100%. You only have to drop drop me a little text with um, the best days, times for you, and we'll work it out so it's a weekly. Will do. Thanks, Claire. Thank, Thank you, you Patrice and Jenny, as well. I love that. I love that. And <laughs> you guys are so lucky. I, like I said, I watch Claire all the time, and it's really about finding somebody that you are aligned with, right? There's so many amazing leaders. You have to find who is it that's going to that you relate to the most. And you guys are just so lucky to have Claire in your office. I know she's so caring, so thank you. And I think we might be coming back for more lead generation classes. Um, we're taking July and August off, so we'll get be back in September, um, Aaron and Wheelock and I. Yes, we definitely are. Well, I said uh, as much as you can give me, we want it all, please, Patrice. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you. This is my one thing. And of course, this is my lead generation as well. So I'm going to look for two referrals within the next two years from everybody on this phone. <laughs> Actually, and by the way, I do ask for two referrals every time. I find that since I ask for two and I do it and you can see in a very funny way. And I don't mean this for you guys, but I mean for real lead generation everywhere that I go, my clients, when they say, oh my God, I did such a good job. And I'm like, now you owe me two more referrals. Like I just say it, it's become a part of who I am. And it's truly increased my business. So just think of little funny little ways that you can inject humor and fun. This is a really cool business, you guys. So I'm grateful to be on this journey with all of you. Thank you. I think everybody saw it, but I did post a Google form. If you want to fill that out, there's also a place for comments. Um, I can include everybody on our marketing for the 66 day challenge, as well as for Patrice's referrals. So thank you guys. I think everybody saw it already though. Thank you. I'm just looking at um, some of the chat. I always forget about all of that. Thank you, Jenny. And again, you guys, you're welcome to reach out anytime. I hope that most of us are friends on Facebook, but please do send a message if you're interested. And again, if you guys want to send private messages, I'm always open to, to listening. So thank you so much. So excited to be here. I'll give you guys all a heart if I can find my reactions button. Thanks so much for your time, time Patrice. We really appreciate you. Thank you. My pleasure. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. I think our team is going to be taking the goal setting class, I believe. So we'll see you again on the other Brilliant. side of the table. <laughs> see you then. Okay. Bye guys. Take care. Bye. Okay.